Hello and welcome to my review of Book 8 Malevolence, in particular the Legio Custodes section. A couple of people on Instagram uh, left some comments saying that they were really interested in me doing a separate video on uh, the Custodes section of Malevolence. There's quite a few things have changed. They've all lost their Misericordias for one, uh, and they get a brand new shiny Ares uh, gunship, um, which is pretty awesome with this magna heavy blaze cannon thing. Anyway, I thought it was a good suggestion actually, um, seeing as it might be a while until I get through reading it and be able to give you a full review at some point. So I've got, um, Constantil Valdor overseeing operations right there. He changed a little bit in the codex. Uh, and there's also, like I say, some new units and bits and bobs. Um, the only difficulty uh, with a kind of review like this is uh, basically the books are massive. You're not going to see both of the pages at the same time. So it's going to be awkward me uh, showing like four pages at once. And also in book seven on the left, Inferno, I'm going to keep to this layout throughout the review. Book seven on the left and book eight on the right. Book seven, um, they incorporated, it was the first time they put um, Custodes seventh edition Horus Heresy rules into a Horus Heresy book. Hence why the artwork and things a big, big push on um, Custodes. What they did is they incorporated them with Sisters of Silence. Um, so it's a bit disjointed. It's not like book eight where you don't get any sisters. You just get um, like an update for um, the Custodes uh, models. So what we'll do is I've already used the page keepers and I'm at Constantin, Constantin Valdor. I might have to turn the light on in a moment, um, but hopefully you can see this. You can see both of them um, and I'll go through all of their stats. So first of all let's have a look at the uh, Custody Shield Captain. So originally he was 190 points, in the new book he's still 190 points. His stat line remains the same, uh, same wounds, same attacks, all those kind of things. What I'll do is I'll just switch the light on. Ah, much better. War gear wise, he's got exactly the same close combat weapon, iron halo, guardian spear. Um, it looks like he can take uh, the same, except for in the new um, one, there's nothing, nothing about a cyber familiar. Um, he can change his uh, guardian spear with sentinel war blade for free. The solarite power talon has actually dropped in price. The power gauntlet um, is the same. The Solarite Power Talons is cheaper at 15 points. The Adracite Spear is the same and the Paragon Spear has actually gone up a bit. You can upgrade him to a Tribune. However, the Tribune now costs 50 points instead of 25 points. Um, and of course, it's still the 2000 points uh, or more. Um, and then it just explains a little bit about uh, the Tribune. Uh, it looks like exactly the same rules there for him. Um, special rules, he's got everything the same as before. So that's the uh, Custodes um, Shield Captain. Same point, same stat line, just missing the Cyber Familiar there. And the Solrite Power Talons have um, gone down a little bit in price. And But um, to have him as a Tribune, a Tribune, whatever, um, costs you more. So let me just jump to uh, pass some Sisters of Silence. Constantin Valdor then. So before he was 275 points, he is now 325 points. Um, so he's jumped in price by 50 points, but his stat line is exactly the same as it was before. Still the same weapon skill, ballistic skill, and all that good stuff. Um, war gear, he's got everything uh, that he had before, minus the Misericordia. He's lost his Misericordia. <laughs> he just, you know, left it on his bedside table or something as he um, walked out one day. So he doesn't have that anymore. The Apollonian Spear has exactly the same um, rules as it did before and he's got Warlord Trait Shadow of the Throne. The Hyper Velocity Bolter is the same as well. What differs obviously is the lack of the Misericordia um, and also he doesn't have the preternatural um, skill or um, something called uh, the Sodality. Um, so he's, he's lost a couple of things there with the special rules. Um, but there you go. 
uh, and also he's, he fits on one page now in the in the new book. So price increase uh, for Constantin Valdor. Clearly he's pretty good on the tabletop and uh, they wanted to just reflect that with the points cost. Um, so next in the Malevolence book, we've got a uh, Legio Custodes Hitier on Guard Squad, uh, which is right here. Um, they bumped up in price in the new book. They're now 250 points, exactly the same stat line throughout. You can still take three and you can still take a Cronus uh, Grav Carrier may be chosen um, as a dedicated transport. Everything else stays the same, but obviously the Solarite Power Talons um, have dropped in price. Presidium um, shields are the same, but the Magisterium, Vexilla and Mastercrafted Power Weapon uh, are now 15 points and before you got them for free. And the Sentinel and the Vexilla and the Sentinel Warblade is 20 points and before you got them from 10. So a bit of a price hike as well, a um, bit of a points um, hike as well. And the same for their, their base cost too. Um, again, they've lost their Misery Cordias, um, but they retain their Refractor Fields and um, custodian armor and guardian spears and um, you can still get them with loads of other um, nice things and they've got the exactly same special rules so a price hike there next uh, good job we've got the legio custodies aquil and terminator squad um, again these have gone up in price these are now 255 points as before they were 225 so 25 point increase um, however the aquil and terminator squad have now got an extra wound they've now got three wounds i always thought it was strange that they that they only had two wounds each um there so they've now got three wounds which is brilliant uh you can still have up to seven however they used to be able to get array strikes for two points each now you have to pay um 15 for the whole squad so before you had three so you pay two points each so that would be six points however it looks like in the options um description there you pay 15 points for the entire squad so you can have clearly uh, 10 of them and 15 points um which is brilliant so it's now what 1.5 points each so the array strikes if you get 10 of them have um technically dropped in price but if you only keep three then they've had a big big price increase um by a factor of sort of over seven anyway so price increase there for the equivalent terminators but they do get that extra wound now pretty good um, however, they have lost their Misery Cordias as well. <laughs> um, then we've got the Legio Custodes Contemptor Achilles Dreadnought. Uh, good, it's right here. Uh, that's gone up in price as well in the new book. You got 215 points as opposed to 200. Exactly the same stat line though. Um, same number of attacks and HP sources. Uh, no hull points, obviously. It looks like it's got everything in terms of war gear. Uh, special rules are the same. The Corvée Laz Pulsar has gone up by 60 points though. So this bad boy, the one that I've got um, with the spear is, uh, with the dread spear, is now 275 points, which is crazy. So it's gone up from 40 points to 60. The Adrathic uh, Destructors um, are the same points and so is the Single Infernus Incinerator. Um, the Rules for the Achilles uh, Dread Spear remain exactly the same. It's still um, Strength 10, AP 2, Melee, Impaling and Master Crafted. Hit rolls on a 6 is when it charges uh, are resolved as Destroyer Hits. Then we go on to Legio Custodes Custodian Guard Squad Troops. So if we just find them here, there they are. Same points, same number of wounds, attacks, all that good stuff. Um, same war gear, except obviously they've, they never had Misericordias before. They don't now. Um, war gear wise, uh, you can still have up to seven of them. Array Shrikes used to be two points each. They are now 15 points each, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I'm pretty sure that that is some kind of typo. I would have thought it's 15 points for the whole squad. Why would they cost more for kind of a, a worse um, unit than, uh, you know, the Aquilan Terminators? I, I don't understand, but they're saying 15 points each for the, those array strikes, which is silly. The Parafite Spears and the Adrasite Spears are the same, but again, the Magisterium Vexilla and the, uh, with the Mastercrafted Power Weapon or the Sentinel Warblade, they've gone up in points before they were free and now 15 and before the Sentinel Warblade was 10 points, now it's 20 points. So a bit of a price price increase in terms of points there. So what do we have next? We have the Sentinel Guard Squad, which are right here. Same um, points cost, uh, same stat line, 
same war gear they've got the same special rules the same shield barricade um it's just the, the it's just the magisterium vexilla was free now it's 10 points before they could get about power gauntlet or power talon for 15 points now the talon is 10 points or the uh, power gauntlet is 15 so it's broken it up in the new um book and again for some reason the array strikes are 15 points each so nothing changed with the base points cost it's just all the the little extras have had a bit of a price increase. Legio Custodes Coronas Grav Carrier. Let's find this in here. There it is. Um, it's had a price increase in the new book. It's now 175 points before it was 135. So it's gone up by 40 points, which is pretty crazy. It's got exactly the same war gears before, the same special rules. It's got that grab backwash um, ability, which um, attackers suffer a minus two to hit uh, the vehicle in assault. Um, options it's lost the ability to have a searchlight but it can still have armored ceramite and extra armor uh, for the same points cost it can still hold 12 models and so on um pretty good the coronas i like that one then in the new book we've got the legio custodes agamartus jet bike squadron which is right here. Okay, so the Legio Custodes Agamartus Jet Bike Squadron, bit of a mouthful. They are exactly the same points um, cost uh, in the new book. Um, same number of wounds. However, um, in the new book, you've got Initiative 5 now instead of Initiative 4. Um, I never really understood why they had Initiative 4 when, when typically all of the other custodies had Initiative um, 5. So I was baffled um, by that, but they've had that bump up to Initiative 5 for no um, additional points cost. They've dropped quite a few uh, special rules. Um, also, they don't have their uh, Misericordia anymore. Also, uh, the war gear for the main um, jet bike. Um, it used to have an Iliastus bolt cannon. It now has a Lastrum bolt cannon, but they still have the refractor field and uh, the custodian armor. Um, the special rules though, like I say, they've dropped. Uh, they've still got deep strike, split fire, and Legio custodies, but they've um, drop from pre preternatural skill and the sodality and invoyable psyche so they've dropped uh, a few special rules there um, you can still have an additional three of them at 75 points each and you can still give them melter bombs at five points so instead of the uh, Ilias Disbolt cannon you used to be able to get it, give them an adrathic devastator you still can but it costs you 15 points instead of five and um, you can still give them the twin linked corvée las pulsar but now it costs you 35 points instead of 25 points the Gur falcon uh, pattern jet bike um, rules are exactly the same in terms of increasing the rider's toughness by one so they've got toughness six um, however they've missed sweeping fire which means um, before members of the unit may fire once with each of their weapons in the shooting phase so they now lo no longer have that the next unit in the book is the uh, legio custodes palace grav attack squadron it was 85 points it's now 95 points um no change in armor ballistic skill or hull points it still has all the same war gear except for this time it's got a surge light um still has the same special rules with the grab backwash um you can still take two additional ones for 95 points each you can still take the extra armor for five points and you can swap out that twin linked arachnus blaze cannon for a twin linked adrathic devastator um, which I don't think um, they've done the pieces with and I don't think it comes with that um, so that's a bit um, frustrating uh, but uh, to get the twin link to Drathic Devastator still costs the same points, 20 points then I just want to touch on uh, a new um, unit in um, the new book called for fast attack called the legio custodes custodian venatari squad now i haven't done a review of these i'll cover their rules um more in depth in their review and i'll try and get it out as quick as possible because we're coming to the end of a lot of the chaos uh, releases so it frees me up to um give you more reviews of the gene stealer cults the orcs and custodies and the imperium things so uh this unit is fast attack choice like I say it uh, costs 210 points um, and it consists of three you can take an additional seven at 65 points each their stat line is exactly the same um, as a normal custodian guard squad um, 
exactly the same, except for their save is three plus, which I always find silly. Very, very silly. They've got a custodian jump harness. They've got a Tarsus buckler and Archaeotech kinetic destroyer, plasma and crack grenades, uh, refractor field. Um, they've actually got quite a few special rules, including Legio custodies, crusader, um, bulky, move through cover, fleet and Oramite pinions. Uh, the Oramite pinions give them uh, invulnerable save of four plus when locked in close combat. That's pretty good. However, it's so hard to get uh, away from the their standard save of three plus. You can swap uh, their Tarsus Buckler and Architect Kinetic Destroyer for a Venatari Lance, 10 points each, or Melter Bombs. So the Architect Kinetic Destroyer is a new type of pistol weapon. It's a 12 inch range, strength seven, AP three, mastercrafted fan burst, um, which means on a roll to six, the bearer may make an an extra shooting attack with this weapon up to a maximum of six rolls um, to hit. That's pretty good that, well, potentially you can have um, six shots of it, but you obviously have to keep rolling the sixes. That's, that's pretty crazy. And the Tarsus Buckler itself then is a melee weapon, bumps the strength up by one, so that's strength six. AP three again, melee and energy nullifier. Now the energy nullifier, um, the AP value of any attack made against a model wearing uh, bearing war gear with the energy nullifier rule is reduced by one. Um, so for a power sword, it strikes a, a model um, resolved at AP4 instead of AP3. That's pretty good and actually that can save your, your bacon. Uh, however, they've got a four plus and vulnerable save while locked in combat anyway and they do have two wounds. It says it uh, reduces the velocity of incoming projectiles on blows. So the Tarsus Buckler can, all intents and purposes, um, knock away like las cannon shots and things or anything that's, you know, if it's an AP1 or if it's an AP2, it just um, reduces that. So very, very um, awesome kinetic uh, shield there. Um, and the Venatari Lance, if you choose to swap that awesome shield and the, uh, the um, AP3 uh, pistol, you can have the Venatari Lance, um, which has got an Archaeotech repeater on it. You've got the strength of the user. So you've got a specific uh, Lance for the Venatari called the Venatari Lance, obviously. If they don't charge, it's strength of the user, AP3. But if they do charge, it's plus one strength. So that's strength six, uh, AP2, um, melee, lightning blows, two-handed and specialist weapon. But also inbuilt to that, they've got an Archaeotech repeater, which is a 12-inch assault two, um, strength seven, AP3, master crafted weapon as well. It's a very difficult choice to make. They have a five plus and vulnerable anyway, and a three plus normal, and then a four plus while in combat, uh, but then the Tarsus Buckler also reduces that AP if you want to have them with Tarsus Bucklers and Kinetic Destroyers. The thing is, if you go, if you just keep them with the pistol and the buckler, um, the maximum AP you're going to be doing is AP3, whereas at least with the Lance, you're going to be getting AP2 um, when they charge. Uh, so it's really up to you which way you, you want to go. Personally, they both have their um, pros and cons. I think the Tarsus Buckler is uh, very useful as their normal and vulnerable save is a five plus um, from projectile. So if they're being targeted by AP3 weapons, um, then they're not having to rely on that uh, invulnerable five plus save, which could you know, make or break them. Um, I'd love to get more of them and equip them with all spears and pistols. Maybe I will at some point. So that was the, the new unit um, that's not in uh, book seven. So I thought I'd just uh, <laughs> review that unit as well. We're now in the heavy support choice after fast attack and it's the Legio Custodes Sagittarum Guard Squad. This is 185 points. In the new book, they haven't changed at all. Um, they still consist of three uh, Sagittarum Guard. Obviously they've uh, dropped their Misericordias on the floor because they don't have them anymore. And they still have the same special rules. You can still take the Cronus Grav Carrier. They're now cheaper. If you want to add uh, more to the three, so 60 points each as opposed to 65 points, the teleportation transponders are the same points, but they can no longer take array strikes at all, which I find is a bit odd that they don't get access to them, uh, but instead they can take a solar out um, power gauntlet like you would want um, the power gauntlet anyway. Uh, in like a mainly shooting um, squad, but 
hey they've got that option there you still can't buy the solarite power gauntlet separately um you can get the adrathic destructor magisterium vexilla um, for 10 points and before it was five points so there's a couple of changes there with what they can have and the the points for that uh, buffing item then in the old book we were on to the legio custodes caladius grav tank one of my favorite grav tanks uh, it has gone up in price in the new um book uh, it's now 220 points and before it was 195 it's still got exactly the same uh, weaponry and war gear except this time it gets a searchlight uh, same special rules you can give it armored ceramite still um, for the same points cost and extra armor the searchlight before you could pay one point for but it's included now uh, and then you can also change its its twin linked Iliastus accelerator cannon for a twin linked arachnus heavy blaze cannon for 25 points before it was 15 points um, so it's gone up in price you're getting a searchlight now for an extra 25 points instead of one and also um, you're paying more for the heavy blaze cannon yeah kind of sucks that it's you you're paying more then on the same page you've got the Legio Custodes um, Contemptor Galatus Dreadnought which is on this page and for some reason they've, they've put some artwork on the new book um, so they're, they're missing a whole big space there they, they could have put that on on that page absolutely easy like they did on there and still have enough space for artwork anyway um, it's the same points cost it's still 250 points um, the stat line remains the same uh, completely it's war gear that still has the Galatus uh, war blade with the inbuilt Infernus uh, incinerator. Still got the Presidium shield and the refractor field and the extra armor and so on. Uh, special rules are still the same and the Galatus war blade, um, same rules there. So nothing's changed, it's just a copy and paste there. In the new book, they have added something here that says when subject to attacks originating in its front arc or in assault, the model's invulnerable save is increased to four plus. In addition, attacks made in assault against it other than by gargantuan creatures and super heavy walkers suffer a minus one penalty to hit and um, to a maximum of six plus. Note that this penalty has no effect on attacks which hit automatically. Um, now before, uh, attacks originating in its front arc or an assault you can re-roll failed and vulnerable saves so that means that before that means that uh, you could re-roll them before but now the invulnerable save you now get a four plus invulnerable save and also a minus one penalty to hit uh, where you had that before but instead of re-rolling it's just increased to four plus Next, we had the Warlord Sinister Pattern Battle Psy Titan. So that was it um, for the Custodes. So nothing else in here. Um, you can see this is a good couple of years ago before a few other models, before the um, Orion Dropship, before the Venatari. And let's move the new book over and have a look at some of the new things um, that they've added for this book. So we didn't have the Telemon Dreadnought a couple of years ago in that book, but now we have it. It's 320 points. Uh, it's weapon skill is six, but it's skill five, strength nine, uh, front armor, side armor, both 13, and the rear is 12, initiative five, attacks four, and four hull points. Um, it normally has the two Telemon Sestus uh, with inbuilt Proteus plasma projectors. And of course it can change either or both of its um, Sestus um, for an Arachna Storm Cannon, which is 40 points, or an Iliastus Accelerator Culverin. Mine's got an Arachna Storm Cannon, 40 points. If you have two of those bad boys, that's going to set you back 400 points um, for a four hull point uh, dreadnought. Crazy. It's got a torso mounted spiculus bolt launcher, smoke launchers, searchlight, extra armor, armored ceramite, and a multi layered refractor field. Um, special rules move through cover, unyielding sentinel. And your unyielding sentinel and indomitable charge so these are the rules right here so indomitable charge when charging this model inflicts d6 hammer of wrath hits rather than just one unyielding sentinel means if this model suffers a penetrating hit two dice must be rolled to determine the result on the vehicle damage table and the highest roll discarded before the final results are, are decided the multi-layer refractor field uh, confers a four plus and vulnerable save increasing to three plus against weapons with the blast special rule or uh, that use a template of any kind and then the arachna storm cannon 
concentrate to blast, range 72 inches, strength 9, AP1, heavy 2, and exoshock. Burst fire, it's 48 inches, strength 7, AP3, and heavy 7. Both very, very strong. Exoshock just means that if you get a penetrating hit on the target, you roll a D6, and uh, on a 4+, plus, so 50-50 chance, you get a second automatic penetrating hit, um, and cover saves can't be taken. The Iliastus Accelerator Culverin, I think, is a little bit poor, in my opinion. I mean, these dreadnoughts are moving, what, 6 inches, according to the old 7th edition. Um, the range of the accelerator culverin is only 36 inches, um, strength 7, AP2 and heavy 5, but it does have rending, heliothermic detonation, and heliothermic detonation. It's worth its weight in custodian armour because if any target suffers one or more unsaved wounds from the weapon and it's not slain, you must immediately take a toughness test, and if they fail that, they suffer instant death. So yes, it's a little bit, yes, it's lacking in range, but you do get five shots with it, and uh, and that can um, inflict instant death. Uh, and if a vehicle suffers a penetrating hit from it, you add one to the a result on the vehicle damage table. Proteus Plasma Projector, which is what's on the Sastus, it's a template weapon, strength five, AP two, assault one, gets hot. And the Sastus weapon is strength times two, so that's strength 18, AP two, melee, shred, and murder strike. Again, Attacks can cause instant death on wound rolls of a six, and it's got four attacks, remember. You roll viable saves against these wounds separately. And the Spiculus Bolt Launcher is brilliant. It's a 48 inch range, so very long range. Strength five, AP four, heavy five, rending and volley fire. Volley fire, basically, if you don't move in the movement phase, you can double the number of shots fired by this weapon. Um, note that the Relance of Special Rule does not allow models to move and claim the benefit of this Special Rule. Good, I'm pleased that they put that, even though it doesn't say Relentless anywhere. It just means that, um, uh, obviously, they can't move and fire that. But if you stayed still and you fired a burst shot with your Agnes Storm Cannon, you've got a 48-inch range, um, seven shots, and then you've got another 10 shots with that. Um, and then obviously if you're in range with the template, um, you'll have a nice uh, template strength 5 AP2 plasma projector, you know, plasma flamer basically. Um, so very, very damaging, still the best uh, dreadnought in my opinion for range, close combat, all those kind of things. Fantastic dreadnought. Pleased that it's made it in this book. Then another new unit that we didn't have uh, a couple of years ago is a Legio Custodes Orion Assault Dropship. 615 points, uh, ballistic skill 5 obviously, front armour 13, side 12, rear 11 and hull point 7. Um, it's a super heavy flyer, it's got two Arachnus pattern heavy blaze cannons, which you're going to have to look in the weapon profile, uh, I think at the front of the book for that, uh, at the front of this section for that. Um, it's also got two nose mounted twin link lastrum bolt cannons and two spiculous heavy bolt launchers. Um, the heavy bolt launcher, so comparing it to the normal uh, bolt launcher, you're getting two less shots, a better strength, same range, but you're also getting rending. It's pretty good. Um, it's got uh, extra armor, armored ceramite, eclipse shield, macro array shrike, armored cockpit, and it can carry 24 models, um, which may include a single Contempt Achilles Dreadnought or Galactus Dreadnought, counting as 10 models each. So if it can carry 24, um, basically, you have uh, you can put a dreadnought in there, and you've still got 14 models. I'm assuming bulky counts as two, uh, so you could have seven normal custodies and one of those dreadnoughts. Pretty good. Um, I won't read you the rest of the um, rules for this one, but basically the eclipse shield um, reduces strength of attacks with template or blast by minus two, and strength of shooting attacks um, by minus one. Pretty good, and the macro array strike um, does have its own special rules. Then we have the very special, brand new Legio Custodes Ares gunship. I assume because they've got the artwork here, it's ready to be released by Forge World any day now. Um, just my look at probably released in the next few days. It's 640 points, so it does cost more. You can't carry anything in it. No dreadnought, no 24 models or anything like that. 
it's got a slightly different stat line to the Orion dropship in that um, the rear armor it's only 10 instead of 11. It's still got the same hull points though. It looks like it's got the same uh, two forward mounted Arachnus heavy blaze cannons, but this says it specifically says two forward mounted, whereas before, whereas the uh, Orion has um, just two. It doesn't say anything about forward firing, but it does have this one nose mounted Arachnus Magna Blaze Cannon and two Infernus Firebomb Clusters. It's got everything else on there too. So the Arachnus Blaze Cannon, I just want to read you a little bit about this because it's pretty good. So it's a concentrated blast is 72 inch, strength 10, AP 1, primary weapon 2, exo shock, mastercrafted, armor bane and instant death. Pretty horrific. If you choose to fire burst fire, it drops its range to 48 inches, strength 8, AP 2, but you get heavy 2, large blast 5 inches. So you get the 5 inches blasted, at strength 8, AP 2. Now unfortunately, uh, it does have an exposed Arachnus capacitors. I take it that's because it's to power the Arachnus um, Magna Blaze Cannon. And what happens is uh, if it suffers a penetrating hit from its rear, um, where you get an explode, you result on the damage table, roll a d6, and on a 5+, plus, the gunship immediately loses all of its remaining hold points and suffers catastrophic damage. Incredible. So very weak from, from the rear, from a penetrating hit from the rear. Isn't everything? Anyway, um, the Furnace Firebomb Cluster, it's all right. It's a strength 5, AP 4, bomb 3, large blast 5 inches, um, ignores cover saves and one use. It's all right that you have a one use, um, but still, uh, that's that. So that's the new, new model and that's it. And that's a good time to end with this awesome looking um, Ares gunship. Whether you think that's worth it, 640 points, um, it's great that it has the um, Arachnus Heavy Blaze Cannons, which is what the Orion has anyway. What you're paying for is those firebomb clusters, which is three bomb blasts, and this uh, Magna Blaze Cannon. Whether you think that's worth it um, compared to carrying a Dreadnought or, you know, 12 um, Custodes in there is really up to you. But I thought I'd leave it on that note. So there we go. As requested, I've gone through all of the Legio Custodes section in uh, Book 8 Malevolence. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been helpful. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.